So let's start with server-based unified messaging. It's called server-based unified messaging because it actually unifies the messages on a single server. This is also sometimes called single message store unified messaging. And basically what this means is Call Express takes the voice messages and deposits them into the user's email inbox. The messages are now actually stored on the email server. Now the advantage of this is since they're in the email inbox, any tools the user is using with email, any deployment um, types that the customer's already done to support email, now leverage it and add voice to it. For example, you see them in your email client when you open up email. If you're using a BlackBerry Enterprise server or good technologies or Microsoft ActiveSync over the air to push real time your email messages out to your, your users' mobile devices, they will now get their voice messages and their fax messages. If you're using cached mode or replication so that when travelers take their laptop offline, they have all their email messages, they'll now have all their voice and fax messages. And if they go and stop somewhere at an internet booth and bring up Outlook Web Access or iNotes or some type of web access to email, they will now also have web access to voice and fax messages. So it's a maximum leverage for the existing infrastructure, and it makes it the easiest one for people to use because they're usually deploying it and using it from a tool they already know. So the upside of this one is it is the most feature-rich, particularly for mobile people. It's the easiest to use for the client, and it does support the real-time push of voice and fax messages out to the mobile devices that are already getting email messages. Now, there's two areas of discussion we have sometimes with customers where they have some concern about this architecture. And the first one, we don't see as much as we used to, but it's the impact on the email server and the network to put the messages in. And five years ago, this was actually a concern, and we would actually run network studies and talk about the storage requirements. But in today's world, when most people have a large number of email messages that have attachments with a very large size, that few voice messages you have tend to not really be very significant. An average voicemail message has about a 200, 250K attachment size to it. And people get you know, anywhere from three to 10 of those messages, and it's not that much of an impact. We do still sometimes talk about that, but the second one tends to be the most important one. And this one's a little more difficult to address because it's not about information we have, it's about information no one has. There's a lot of things going on legally with various types of businesses that have to do with e-document policies and privacy. So if you look at HIPAA in the health industry, that's the Patients Privacy Act, it spells out what a, a good health industry uh, um, company has to do to ensure that records, communications, everything having to do with the patient stays as private as possible. And FERPA does the same thing. If you look at FERPA for the educational industry, it's the same type of act. And Sarbanes-Oxley is the same thing, kind of a little more powerful even for public companies, where not only is privacy an issue, but you actually have requirements for maintaining records and making them available for disclosure. Now, all these documents completely ignore voicemail. None of them mentions voicemail at all. But there is some concern that if I put my voicemail into my email system, what does that mean? Does, does that mean I'm now covered? Are those voice messages subject to those same laws and regulations? And the answer is no one knows. Nobody's gone to court to spell out one way or another whether voice messages left in email fall under all these same guidelines or not. So it does make some corporate customers a little bit nervous. So for those customers, we recommend client-based unified messaging. With client-based unified messaging, we're going to leave the messages on Call Express. The voice and fax messages maintain their residence on their, on their relevant servers and we're going to unify them instead of at a server level, at a client level. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to take an email client that's already connected to the customer's email message store and build a second connection between that email client and the Call Express message store. Call Express becomes very similar to an IMAP email store in this case. So now from that one client, albeit in two different folders, I can now see my email messages in one folder and my voice and fax messages in another folder. For desktop users, this is very little difference between this and having server-based UM. I can still open those messages and play them over the phone and play them over the speakers. I can build folders about um, projects I'm working on and drag voice, fax, and email messages into it. Very, very little difference. There is a difference for mobile users, though. 
since the messages aren't stored in the email server, some of the tools that people have deployed to make email more effective won't automatically help with voicemail now. For instance, if you're using a BlackBerry server to push your email messages out to your uh, mobile users, if we're not putting voice messages in the server, they're not going to get pushed to the BlackBerry device. So a little less productive for mobile users. The upside is it has less impact on the email server and the network, and there are less concerns from some people about HIPAA, Sarbanes-Oxley, FERPA, etc. We're not actually saying here that this is a better way to do this, that this has less legal implication, because nobody knows that. What we're doing is saying we can do it either way. If one way sounds better to you, then you can do it that way. Unlike any other system on the market, if you change your mind, you can change the type of UM that's deployed with the click of a button. So if you've gone ahead and rolled out server base and you get down the road a little and in your industry or, or just your feelings in general are that it's not a good idea to store those on the email server anymore, the click of a button and you can go from server based to client based. And no other system can offer you that flexibility. And that's pretty nice to know in a changing legal infrastructure where there, there's some very, very cloudy areas out there. It's nice to know that you have the flexibility as a user to control that destiny yourself. The third type of UM we look at that's also licensed on Call Express is called Secure Unified Messaging. Now, Secure Unified Messaging was actually the result of the direct request from a number of our large enterprise customers who said, when we do desktop voice messaging, in other words, we use an email client to look at our voicemail, no matter what type we use, server or client, there's a problem in our eyes in that the end user can forward that voicemail message off-site. Now, prior to this, voicemail was accessed on the telephone, and it stayed inside the relative corporate firewall, and it was a corporate asset, so to speak. And now, with desktop messaging and an email client, there's nothing to stop employees from taking those messages, saving the attachments to a CD, or forwarding them off to their Hotmail account. And so we had customers that said, we really can't have that. What can you do for us? So we built a new type of unified messaging, secure unified messaging. Messages stay on the Call Express server, and they're accessed with a web application. So what we've done is we've taken our web phone manager application, which prior to this was the web tool that users could go into to configure their mailbox, a nice graphical tool to help them set up their mailboxes. And we added to that the ability to view voice messages. So now a user can be set up so they can get their voice messages from their desktop or from the Internet using this tool. What happens when they go to get that message is we use Microsoft Streaming Media to deliver it to the phone or to the speakers, but they cannot save a copy of that message, nor can they forward it off-site. So it's the most secure version of unified messaging. Messages remain on the voicemail server. and they can't be accessed. It's also a touchless install. It's turned out to be very popular for some companies because once they install the, the web application on their web server, basically there's nothing more to be done. There's no desktop visits, no software to be loaded, no configuration to worry about. It does run on a, a Microsoft um, Internet server. It runs on an Apache server. It's really technology independent. And it also works in browsers on Windows clients, Mac clients, Linux clients. It works on Safari. It works on Firefox. It works on Internet Explorer. Very, very open standards type of solution. The only real downside here, I guess, is it's not really unifying all the messages in a single app, but it does give you that same functionality of handling from a desktop. Now, all three types of UM, server-based, client-based, and secure, are available on Call Express. You don't buy them that way. You simply buy a license for users. Let's say you buy a license for several hundred users, the administrator can now configure those users for any of those three types as they'd like and change them anytime they want. So you're not locking yourself into anything in the way of architecture when you buy a Call Express. Those three types are completely interchangeable and basically you can change them as many times as you want just by clicking a button. They can be assigned on a per-user basis or on a per-class-of-service basis. 